audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 10th day of April. 2017. Michael's got to catch a plane, so we'll go straight over to him, and uh, we'll figure out later why, for the third day in a row, or fourth, I get kicked out as you log in. But for now, I was thinking, take I was away. thinking, it, <clears throat> okay, you should be looking at my charts now. Yeah, um, I got them. I was thinking it might be because I log in, you know, automatically it logs in under your name. That could be it. Um, you know, I always have to go in and change my name. Anyway, let's get this, get this show started. Here we go. All right. Sorry, everyone, if my voice sounds a little off. The headset that I normally use is 710 miles away. And the headset that I bought was just horrible. So uh, we'll do the best you, we can. You sound that. you sound a thousand times better than you did in the uh, trading room this morning. Really? Yeah, what sounds pretty. Sounds pretty normal. Okay. Well, that's good. All right. Well, that's good because this is the recording that's coming out to the public. Um. <clears throat> all right. Here we go. Today is Monday, the tenth day of April 2017. <laughs> it's my ex's 46th birthday. Um, all right. Uh, to get a free trial from us, if you have not taken a free trial, and I want to <clears throat> I want to just mention something here. We have um, the concierge trade alerts and you know all the other things. The one dollar trial for the concierge trade alerts, for those of you who are out there listening who have taken it in the past, you can only take that one dollar trial for the trade alerts once, once every six months, twice in a lifetime. Okay, I know we have some people who just keep sending in a dollar so they'll stay on the list, and I keep having to refund that dollar because you can't do that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage at cfrn.net and scroll down to where it says free five-day trial and click on that. And then scroll down to where it says start a free trial, no credit card required, and click on that. And then fill in these four little slots here, hit the submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click that confirmation link, you will not get a free trial. All right, it's as simple as that. Um, <clears throat> now we'll take a quick look at the spreadsheet. If you can look at the spreadsheet, you gotta read all the CFTC risk disclosure stuff down at the bottom. Um, here we go. We had a yellow day today. That means we were positive, but we did not get the gold. So we're plus eight on the euro, plus nine on today. We're plus nine on the YM, plus two on crude, minus eight on gold. Um, gross on the day, 35. Number of trades, we took seven, seven this morning. Gross monthly profit so far, 787.50 over six days, averaging 131 and a quarter a day. Um, 
On the year now, 10,486, that's over 67 days, averaging 156 per day. Okay, 156 per day. Again, if you're going to read this, you're going to read all the CFTC risk disclosure stuff down at the bottom. Now, before I get too much into what I'm doing, I want to point something out here to all you guys who are not doing the one trade a day stuff or other things. Um, the one trade a day sell right here, Dwayne said to sell uh, 23.57 with initial target of three points down to 23.54 and the final target down here at 23.51. And he nailed it right on, nailed it. Six points right there, easy money. <clears throat> Sorry, just wanted to kind of pat Dwayne on the back because I don't think people do that enough. Um, all right, gold. Uh, in the gold today, we started out right here with a stop out, and that's what stopped us from getting the gold for the day, that one stop out right there. Then we had another break even right here. Um, let's see, right over here, there was a trade. I didn't like it because the cycle was flat and in the middle, so I didn't do anything with it. It would have stopped out. Um, and then during the break, there was a long there, and a long right over here, and another long right there during the break. <clears throat> so the markets really started moving here during the break. Not so much while we were doing the room this morning. Um, <clears throat> in the euro, the first one that we had right here was six ticks. We missed that one, which would have been a break even. We got that one, which was a break even. And then we got this one over here, which was two more ticks. Okay. Um, crude oil. On crude, we just had the one opportunity right here for two ticks. And it really, I mean, it was really a flat morning. You know, there was nothing that we could do this morning. Um, during the break, there was an opportunity right here for a few ticks. And, you know, I don't think I would have done anything with this right here. The dynamic support being right there and the cycle being flat and in the middle, I would have left that alone. Um, the YM, well, the YM's really been moving because the ES was really moving. Okay. <clears throat> But this morning, um, well, that was during the break, the ES was really moving. During, during the room, the ES was totally sideways and stuck to the weekly trading zone. But we had one opportunity here on the YM, and we took nine ticks on that. And there was a follow-up one right there that was just a momentum-type trade. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Right here, look, during the break, when the European markets close, bang, things start moving around. I'm telling you, that half an hour between 11.30 and 12, when, we, when we're on break, there's usually a lot of activity in there. And you can see in here, there was trade after trade after trade. Okay. And that was it. We were plus nine on the, on the YM for the day. Um, <clears throat> so let's bring this back up. And we'll go over it one more time quickly. Um, I was plus eight on the euro, plus nine on the YM plus two on crude and minus eight on gold for a net of 35. Seven opportunities today. And that puts us at 787.50 over six days, averaging 131.25 per day. Um, that's two hours with one contract. <laughs> it's two hours with one contract. Um, on the year now, 10,486 and a quarter. That's over 67 days, averaging 156 per day. Okay. Um, if you're going to read this, again, you got to go down and read all the CFTC risk disclosure stuff right down at the bottom, right below it. And if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage of CFRN.net and scroll down to where it says free five-day trial and click on that. And then scroll down to where it says start free trial and click on that. And fill out these four little slots right here. And hit submit. Um, you know, if you put in a, a, a phony email, <coughs> If you put in a phony email, you're never going to get anything. Um, and I would rather have you put in no phone number than a bad phone number, okay? Because I won't call no phone number. Um, all right, and that is that. All right, so with that, we can pass it back out to Fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Um, what did I say about the ES? I said the ES was all morning. It was stuffed inside this zone. This zone right here. You see? Stuffed inside the zone. And then, bam, 1130 comes along. And we go down to this zone. And then we get down below. And now it's probably going to go lower. 
the, the other thing that I said about it was Dwayne <clears throat> in the one trade a day said sell 2357 looking for 2351. So there were six points available in that one trade a day. Six points. All right. <clears throat> and that's it, guys. With that, Dwayne, you can take it back if you are there and ready. Because it is 12.18. Thank you, sir. I'm ready. All right. All right. <clears throat> Safe flight. Yes. All right. Thanks. Safe flight. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everyone. And hope you all have a great day. And we'll be back tomorrow. All right. Okay, guys. Um, let's start with the numbers. By the way, welcome. Hope you had a great weekend. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. Glad to have you with us. Um, I, I just got to show you this. Um, We go back to Syria, Thursday night, partners workshop, we've already talked about it. On the concierge trade alerts, we had said to sell 12, uh, 23.49, that was a 12 point move down to the zone, to the tick. Uh, then it rallied back up and during the workshop we said sell 23.48 if it rallies up that high. I even sent that out on Twitter on the tweeter and uh, on the Google Plus so that anybody that wanted a part of it could play along. And then we, or I suggested taking profits at uh, 23.42. So at 12, we had 6. But what I really wanted to show you was now, these are last week's zones, as you know. Uh, partners got this week's zones this morning at 6.15 a.m. Eastern. Okay. So, the rest of the world will be looking at last week's zones until Thursday when I unveil this week's zones to the general public. That's just the way we do it. Okay. The zones are a partner perk. So we get into this zone and we go from zone to zone <laughs> to zone. Oh, don't quite make it back up to the zone. Back down, we missed it by, would we miss it by four ticks? Yeah. Back down to the zone. Back up to the zone and back down to the zone. So from 52 to 60, that's an eight point journey. So we got eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. 48, minus that one, so 47 points inside of a zone, it's crazy, but as Michael said, it looks like we're breaking down below 51 here and headed lower. Now ton of you, and that's ton with a capital T, took advantage of the concierge trade alert special offer last night. I was able to get to some of you last night and get you on the list. Others, I have not. So, if you signed up for that trial, you paid your $1, and now you're sending emails like, okay, I, you know, now what? the now what's coming. You're going to get an email that says uh, here's two video classes, go watch these. 
you're going to get an email tonight that has the weekly uh, or you're going to get an email tonight that has the concierge trade alerts you're going to get an email today that has this week's weekly trading zones and the link and the password to the live training room and a link where you can go and download the platform and indicators if you want okay so if you have, I got to some of you last night as many as I could and then it got late and I knew I had to get up early see Wall Street opens at 6 30 a.m. my time I'm in Pacific time eight months out of the year so I have to try to get some sleep and I'm better at it than I was uh, I've gotten better I really have so all that stuff's coming at you and the zones tonight I think I'll try to get them out by 7 p.m. no guarantee but I'll try to get them out by 7 p.m. I always try to get them out by 9 p.m. but when you get your zones tonight you'll also see the zones from last night and We'll go through them here today on the radio show as we always do, but looking at the S&P, <laughs> there's a whole lot of activity going on. Okay, let's go look at the numbers around the world and kind of get our bearings and see what's going on. We'll start with the U.S. markets. These are the cash markets, okay? This is a show about all things futures, but we start with the cash markets just to confuse you <laughs> the Dow is down 25 points NASDAQ is down 10 points S&P 500 is down 3 points and the Russell 2000 is up almost a point that's just how quiet it is now for those of you who did get your week or your concierge trade alerts last night you'll notice that the Russell was missing I had an issue with the Russell data that's been corrected so tonight there will be trade alerts for the Russell okay in the commodity basket crude oil is up 63 cents trading at 52.87 <laughs> which uh, I'll just throw you a, a freebie the next weekly trading zone on crude is 5290 slash 95 so for whatever that's worth gold is up 70 cents trading 1258 as we move down to the Asian markets the Nikkei is up a hundred and closed up 133 points that's three-quarters of 1% Shanghai closed down 16 and the Hang Seng closed down five more quiet and was Europe quiet quiet as a church mouse footsie down almost a point <laughs> the DAX down 24 the CAC down 27 points for the CAC that's actually half of 1% that's our movering shaker for the day <laughs> uh, it's Monday this too will pass won't it <laughs> say it will all right whatever you think's best all right let's talk about some stuff More and more reports are suggesting that the redesigned iPhone 8 will be delayed. It's 
likely that the phone will be announced in September, but delayed until later in the year. Did you know that there was a new iPad released last week? Huh. Well, you're not alone. Highly unusual of Apple to release a product and not make a big to-do. It's the same size as the Pro. It's not quite as powerful. It's faster than the other model that it replaced. But um, they guess just didn't feel like doing a stage show. So, anyway, let me find out what time John's going to pop in here. Hang on a second. All right, there we go. <sighs> Gig Economy Startup TaskRabbit. I told you about TaskRabbit a long time ago, probably two, three years ago. And it didn't look like it was ever going to take off. Uh, now it's looking into selling itself. CEO Stacy Brown Philpot. Uh, these hyphenated names, uh, no offense if you have a hyphenated name, confirmed to Recode that the company is looking into an acquisition offer which came about during its latest funding round. It just never, it just never took off. Uh, what is TaskRabbit, you ask? Well, If you need something done and you don't want to do it, you can use an app to um, get somebody to do it for you. Maybe maybe they have a maybe they have a website. Ask Rabbit. Now, I think in some parts of the country, like maybe New York City, uh, it actually did take off. In Phoenix, uh, it was kind of a non-starter. Just, just didn't happen. So here we are at the illustrious TaskRabbit site. You can log in. You could become a tasker. What that means is kind of like becoming an Uber driver, except I guess you don't have to have a car. Um, you sign up and you say, I'll do stuff. And then when somebody in your town needs stuff done, maybe they need, maybe they've had too much to drink, but they want to drink more. So they need somebody to run to the store and get beer. That could be you. Maybe their garage door needs painting. That could be you. You go onto the app and you say, I need somebody to do this, and I'm willing to pay this much. And taskers are out there watching their app. And if someone in their area posts a task, it comes up on their app, uh, this guy three miles from you wants a Big Mac and fries. You know, and he'll pay you five bucks to bring it to him. So you you calculate, all right, how much gas, how far I got to drive, is it worth it? You, you get the idea? Now, I don't doubt that there are some rabbits out there 
who will do illegal or immoral things like, you know, go get you a dime bag or something. But the company is, you know, they frown on that and they only want legal and legitimate stuff happening. <sighs> Repair and refresh your home. Book a top-rated handyman. From furniture assembly, <laughs> Ikea, anyone, to TV mounting, we'll take care of it. Tackle home projects. Mount a TV or a mirror. How it works. Describe the task. Choose from a variety of home services and select the day and time you'd like a qualified tasker to show up. Give us the details. We'll find you the help. Select from a list of qualified and fully vetted taskers for the job. Choose taskers by their hourly rate and start chatting with them right in the app. Get her done. Just like that, your tasker arrives and gets it done. When your task is complete, payment will happen seamlessly and securely through the app. No, no uncomfortable moments of, uh, oh, well, how much do I owe you? What? Man, that seems like a lot. It's all agreed upon. And they have a happiness pledge. Oh, that's pretty neat. Trust and safety are our top priority. All taskers must undergo extensive background and identity checks, and each task covers up to one million in property damage. Always have peace of mind. Real people, real tasks. See, when this thing first launched, it was just an app. They didn't even they didn't have this very fine website. See, now here's Nadine. She specializes in furniture assembly. No. She hired someone who specialized in furniture assembly. Home repair. Moving, packing, house cleaning, yard work. And I'm pretty sure they'll go to the store for you too. So... They're selling their stuff. They're putting their stuff on the auction block. I don't know what uh, what their take was. In other words, how much did they get out of each task? And it doesn't say at what price they plan to sell their stuff. Hmm. Task rabbit. I lost my play. On a computer, I meant. All right, let's move along here. Let's get going. Let's get hopping. Twitter. I was just looking to see if Bert was trying to log in there. Okay. Twitter's top execs got another big payday last year as its stock tanked. How does that happen? <laughs> Twitter's top execs got another big payday last year as its stock tanked. The company's latest proxy filing shows the compensation packages that Twitter execs earned. Want to know how much? I'll tell you. Hmm. Huh. Anthony Noto, Twitter's COO. Got a total compensation package worth twenty-three point seven million in twenty sixteen, according to the proxy. That includes a base salary of four hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars 
and tens of millions of dollars worth of stock. Noto was previously the CFO and was promoted to COO in November, a move that earned him an additional $12 million a year in stock. You know, these Silicon Valley guys, they blow my mind. It's like monopoly money to them. Uh, I'm not jealous. Uh, okay, maybe I am. <laughs> but it just, it seems very surreal. Adam Bain, who stepped down at COO last November, earned... 29.3 million in 2016. Twitter's top lawyer, uh, Vijaya Gaty, took home a base salary of 498,000, up from 370,000 the year before. Her total compensation in 2016, that's one year, 365 days including stock awards, totaled $9.8 million. Now, we all have heard Twitter cry about how they're struggling, they can't hardly make ends meet, how are they going to generate more revenue? Well, good Lord, somebody's getting fat. Well, no, they probably go to the gym and have a personal trainer, so they're probably not getting fed. As for CEO and co-founder Jack Dorsey, who's also the CEO of the digital payments company Square, he once again took no salary in 2016. He's got so much money, he doesn't even need a stinking, he says, I don't need no stinking salary. That's in the tradition of other founder CEOs, such as Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and Alphabet's Larry Page. And for those who don't know, Google is now actually has a parent company called Alphabet, who take Mark and Larry both take $1 as an annual salary. Dorsey owns 2.4% of Twitter's total shares. Twitter also said that Peter Fenton will not be standing for re-election to Twitter's board of directors at the annual shareholder meeting in May. Fenton, a partner at Benchmark Capital and an early investor in Twitter, has been on Twitter's board since 2009. Shares of Twitter finished Friday's regular session at 1429, just slightly above the all-time low of 1373. Now, stocks trading at an all-time low. The COO made off last year with $23 million. The previous COO made off with $29 million. And their attorney made off with $10 million. Poor Twitter. So how'd the stock do last year while everybody's making millions? Twitter stock fell roughly 30% in 2016. The NASDAQ rose 7% that year. And the Dow Jones composite grew by 13%. Crazy stuff. Let me see if I can zoom this thing up big enough to read it here. I don't think I can. I think they printed that small on purpose. <laughs> okay. The Executive Chairman Omid, he made $12 million last year. Adam Bain made $29 million. And Adam Messenger, the former Chief Technology Offer, 
he made 19 million and then he left so I guess uh, now Twitter co-founder and board member Evan Williams plans to sell up to 30 percent of his shares I wonder if he tells us why After a year and a half of no selling, I filed a new 10B5-1 plan to liquidate a minority of my Twitter stock over the next year. This plan kicked in on Monday. It actually pains me to be selling at this point, but this sale is all about personal context, not company context. William sold about $4 million worth of Twitter stock Wednesday, according to SEC filings. So, I mean, is it any wonder you know, we're trading at all-time lows? <clears throat> but that's just the beginning. He plans to sell up to 30% of his shares over the next few months. The sale would reduce his stake in Twitter to slightly under 4% from about 5%. Twitter shares fell by more than 1% on the news after starting Thursday's session trading slightly up. The Williams stressed in his blog post that the move did not reflect any loss of confidence in the company he founded 11 years ago. The stock sales by one of the company's high-profile founders is another setback for Twitter as it tries to get back in investors' good graces amid a string of bad news. Williams will remain on Twitter's board. Uh, Williams also served as Twitter CEO for a brief time. He stepped down in 2010. He's now the CEO of Medium, a blogging platform. Twitter has gone through a series of struggles over the past few years as its growth has stalled, but people use it as much as they ever have. The company has seen an exodus of top executives, including Adam Bain. Jack Dorsey, the co-founder who took over as CEO in 2015, has tried to right the ship, but he's also the CEO of digital payment company Square. But a plan to focus on streaming live videos such as sporting events has failed to rekindle growth. And on Tuesday, news surfaced that Twitter's deal to stream NFL games during the 2016 season was going to the company's rival Amazon for the 2017 season. That's a big blow. William said in his blog post that he was optimistic about Twitter's future, and he noted that the vast majority of his assets were in Twitter stock. Selling some of his shares would enable him to invest in tech startups, philanthropic efforts, and political donations. I'm not a public market investor, Williams wrote, and I feel very fortunate to be able to use funds to enable other people to do good things. Williams isn't the only major Twitter investor to dump a lot of shares. Chris Saka, who you see occasionally on Shark Tank, an early Twitter investor said in March that he had sold all of his shares since Dorsey took over as CEO. And from an all-time high, well, oh, that chart doesn't give me an all-time high. All right. Well, that's the deal. Please use Twitter today. They need your help so they can pay these enormous uh, salaries. Come on now. A Spotify employee was killed in the terrorist attack in Stockholm. Chris Bevington was a director of global partnerships and business development at the company. Our hearts and prayers are with his family. The city of Dallas was hacked on Friday night and its emergency warning system was triggered. Officials told the New York Times that the breach was likely to have happened locally. So <laughs> the Russians aren't getting blamed this time. Uber has told its side of the story in its court fight with Google's self-driving car division, Waymo. Uber said Waymo's lawsuit is a misfire. 
I don't know what that means. I would tell you if I knew. Amazon will spend about $4.5 billion on its fight against Netflix this year, according to JP Morgan. In July, Amazon CFO Brian Olsavsky said Amazon would nearly double its investment in video. Wow. Now, remember, Amazon, I guess you can buy some videos on Amazon, but if you have Prime, man, you get most of it free. Well, it's not free because the cost of Prime is going up to $99 a year. But if you don't have Prime, we ordered a case of toilet paper the other day. <laughs> I, I joked about this probably two years ago on the show that the day would probably come when we would have toilet paper delivered to our doorstep because of Amazon, because of Prime, because of the economy of scale and blah, blah, blah. All right. You ready for this? I got 96 rolls. 96. And it's, it's the good stuff. All right. 35 bucks. No shipping. I'm a Prime member. Now, once we go through the 96 rolls, we can then tell the computer we use so many rolls per week. And so we will, we can put in a standing order because as long as we remain healthy, I guess we'll continue to go to the bathroom. Uh, now, once the kids move out, the order will get cut in half because there will be two people here instead of four. They're spending $4.5 billion uh, to fight Netflix. Now, Netflix doesn't have any toilet paper. <laughs> They don't have any prune juice. They don't have any clothing. All they have is video. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Back Channel explained why Uber can't get rid of CEO Travis Kalanick. Many tech companies have a share structure that gives the CEO ultimate control. I think Mark Zuckerberg... Uh, created such a, I don't think they can get rid of him. China threatened to make life tough for Google if Trump keeps up his criticism. Ooh. Politician <clears throat> Lou Binge said if Trump kept criticizing the country's trade practices, this would impact Google's progress. John, welcome to the show. Hi there, how are you? I'm very good, how about you? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, it was quite a, an eventful weekend, um, but Interestingly, uh, uh, I think some of the comments I made last week uh, on the show uh, become more uh, make more sense today. I uh, he should have gone. Listen, the only thing that this guy has said understands, and somebody said it. Somebody pretty big said it yesterday. Is if he's uh, in fear of his life, uh, that's the only uh, way that this guy is going to change his behavior. Um, you know, doing a pinprick job on an airfield is, isn't going and, and having the audacity to have planes take off a few hours later and, and, and bomb the same area is just beyond outrageous. And it just shows uh, what, what an absolute slime ball this guy is. Uh, he um, Now, who, I mean, who, are you, who are you talking about, Assad? I'm talking about Assad, yeah. Okay. Now, they should have sent the whole 60, 60 of these cruise missiles straight into the palace. It would have been the only thing that would have that would have scared the heck out of him, and uh, you know because look, I'm not criticizing Trump for what he did. It was a good move, but it didn't do enough it, because if he if he'd gone all the way and bombed the Paris palace from day one, uh, he, he'd be in a totally different position today. He'd have a whole much more, more way way more leverage with Putin, and 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 a massive amount of leverage over Assad. I think Assad would be running running for the hills. 
uh, because he knows he's got a target on this. And, and and listen, he's a war criminal for heaven's sake. You know, he's a he's a war criminal. Yeah, a thousand is. times over. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the world's got to wake up and and get you know get behind and and get out get after this sort of thing because it's it's sort of like um, you know gotten very slack since World War II. Uh, you know, the, which was the last time they really you know. And, and I guess you know the the Serbian situation. They they convicted some people for war crimes, but they it's and a lot of the war crimes that have been going on in the last six years have. I mean, there's been no. It's just it's just it's, it's as if it didn't happen, and and now we have a wake up call finally. So um, that's, that's that's my feeling. I think I was dead right from you know on my first comment. No, I you were. I agree. Time. Might as well just get it over with, because the guys, you know, right, exactly, exactly, because you know the problem is leopard doesn't change his spots. So you get all these journalists saying, "Oh, you know, what's next and what has he got?" You know, they're trying to second guess him, and it's so painful to listen to <clears throat> uh, all these uh, armchair quarterbacks. Um, but anyhow, uh, the uh, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to, and and, and as I said, if he'd done that on day one. You know, then look at the leverage you'd have over North Korea, uh, with this, you know, realizing that you know he could. And, and I'll tell you, if you if you go after the guy's houses, I mean, this fellow is. I mean, you know, you you you'd have probably got the the seven thousand dollar shoes of the wife, you know, because when 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 things were good in Syria and he had the oil wells and the price of oil was high, they were making so much money. You know, they they were living at a at a lo another level. They were living in Wonderland, and they didn't. You know, they 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 had no regard for the people or anything else. They were raking in billions and billions of dollars, and uh, until things started to go wrong, but they was but they've still been able to make a ton of money in the last few years in spite of it all. So it's absolutely just disgusting uh, uh, what's been going on in this country with and and the annihilation of half half a million people is just unforgivable. You know, it's, it's just genocide on a scale, you know, almost as big as World War Two. <clears throat> it's, it's terrible, uh, and and thank God somebody's doing something about it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, which I thought is a, a worthwhile, is, you know, I said on this show weeks ago, I called it uh, the the whole Obama uh, administration is rotten to the core, and stinks to high heaven, and and it was Laura Ingraham who came out and used my exact same words on Hannity uh, last week, um, and uh, uh, she, uh, this, um, uh, it's even, <clears throat> the, the extent of all this spying, they've been spying on lawmakers, I think I sent you an email about that story, where they, they've been, they were spying on other lawmakers in the 2015 year, <clears throat> so the, the, this is all going to get exposed, it's going to come out for oh, almost for sure. And as somebody said, uh, you know, the, the FBI and the Secret Service should be arresting people like Adam Schiff and some of these other uh, characters, you know, for, for trying to uh, uh, overturn the government, the legitimate government, i.e. Donald Trump. Um, and they should be led away in handcuffs because that's what that's all it is. It's just, it's, it's kind of uh, it's treason. It's absolute treason. Uh, and. Um, the other thing, uh, J James Kallstrom, you know, you know who he is. Uh, former, James Kallstrom. Uh, refresh my memory. He's former, he's a former deputy head of the FBI. I, I think he was the head of the FBI in New York before, you know, in, in the 90s. Um, and uh, this guy's a real straight shooter, and he's he said that he can't he can't he can't uh, fathom what's gotten, you know, this Comey, how he's, he, he, this, if I was Trump, after seeing this report with him talking about it, I would fire, or I would get the Justice Department to relieve Comey of his duties and put Kallstrom in right away to, to clean house in the FBI and straighten out this whole law enforcement uh, area of this country, because this guy really knows what's going on, and he says, that the, you know, the fact that these leakers have not been exposed yet or gone after is an absolute disgrace and um, and and he says for, for Comey to be pursuing a you know a, a totally worthless uh, you know he was just saying all this stuff about Russia 
it's all BS. It's all concocted. The whole thing is trumped up. So if it's trumped up, what the heck is the FBI still investigating it? Why haven't they come out and said it? And, and said it for what it is. And he said, you know, and this guy's got contacts all over the all over the map. He knows what's going on more than anybody. Uh, and uh, it, it, just, it just vindicates what I've been saying on this show all along, that all this Russia stuff is absolute nonsense. And now it's obviously proven so, because Trump, uh, you know, did what he did last week, and he wouldn't have done it if he was in, in cahoots with, with, with Putin. So, and I think he's, I think he's going to, I think he's up against Putin now, and, uh, and the other, look, Trump, uh, as somebody else said uh, uh, last week, um, you know, this guy single-handedly from 2012 when he registered Make America Great Again, he knocked off all these, all these uh, Republicans and then took out Hillary Clinton to become the president. And I, one thing I can see with the, with the shuffles that have been going on in, in the government already I think Trump, if you don't perform, he's not fooling around. You know, this isn't going to be kind of a cradle, you know, a, 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 a feather your nest type situation where somebody is going to be working in the White House because they, because of either what they did in the campaign or because they might have been a buddy in the past. If they don't perform, they're out. You know, this isn't a game. He's, he's, he's deadly serious. I think he's, he's going to be... Uh, anybody who's not doing their job or is not performing is going to be done. They're going to be out. And I think in, in time, all these people who are leaking out of the White House are going to be out of a job. So I, I think he's uh, he's a very adept at, and uh, you know the, he's a, 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 what they said was you know you can't underestimate this guy and nobody's giving him credit for his for all the things that he's done, including. You know, the flaw, a flawless week. You know, he uh, look at all the things that happened last week, and everything went off flawlessly, um, including throwing a you know an awesome dinner for the for the Chinese, uh, you know, equal to to a Buckingham Palace event. And um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, I brought up some pictures uh, on the show when you brought that up the other day. The, some website had posted. Uh, pictures of the dining room and the table and the table settings and it was <laughs> as fine as I've ever seen. Right. And, and I mean, let's face it, <clears throat> the Chinese leader comes over, this is a guy of substance, you know, he's not, a, he's, he's not a, you know, there's, no, there's never been a president like him who's got so much property around the world that he can, he can decide wherever he wants to entertain anybody at any time uh, in, in, in probably, a, you know, more than a dozen countries and and more than and almost 50 states, or certainly you know 20 or 30 states. He's got he's got reps residence in. So he's a formidable guy, and uh, he really came through last week in a big way. And and the other thing is Trump. Trump is a winner. He's going to win, and he's even you know the 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 Meadows. You know the guy from the <clears throat> from the uh, Republican um, whatever they call it caucus uh the freedom caucus uh they he was very very deferential to trump when in an interview and you know they said well what do you reckon over trump going up she says no no he says look I, that, that's no big deal that we've got to get together and we've got to get this thing passed and it's going to get passed i mean it's going to it's going to it's probably going to get passed in the next month as soon as these guys come back from the recess i wouldn't be surprised if it's passed within a few weeks and and he's just going to continue. And now people are saying, oh, you know, the tax thing is not going to be done. I guarantee you, the tax reform is going to be done. That is a absolute. Uh, that that is that uh, all of the objectives of Trump. And and eventually, you know what? Now they're saying, oh, you know, Mexico is not going to pay for the war anymore. They're going to pay for it one way or another. Or probably at the end of the day, they might even do split the deal 50-50. That would be a great, you know, that would be a great uh, win, win for Trump if the Mexicans and the, and the U.S. pay for the wall equally. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a win for Trump. And uh, maybe even uh, Trump might do a deal with them and offer to help, uh, put, you know, because they want to build a wall in the South. They've got a big problem with all these people coming over from uh, Honduras and Guatemala and, and Nicaragua and Salvador and all these places. I mean, it's a big problem. Uh, because they're streaming into Mexico and they're taking jobs from Mexicans, and they're also uh, streaming north 
and they're they're really the only people who are, who are coming across the border these days. The the number of Mexicans who are coming over, as, as you, well, the whole immigration thing has gone down drastically, uh, which is a big win for Trump already. But uh, the number of Mexicans who are actually coming in these days is, is at an all time low. It's at an all time low. So they you know they don't want they they don't want to take. The, the deportees, they don't want them to come back into the country. You know, they, they want them to go back directly to their country. They don't want the hassle. They don't want the hassle. Mm-hmm. To be fair, you know, <clears throat> look, they used to, in the old days, they used to get on these trains and everything. That's 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 supposedly not allowed anymore now. So they, they're pretty strict about that. Uh, you you know, know, I took the train one time from Nogales to Mazatlan. That was an interesting journey that and that's that was 30 years ago yeah i know that used to be quite a ride you know through the if you go through the canyons and everything mm-hmm yep yeah it's, it's an epic it's an epic trip it's an epic trip listen there's some pretty big things going on in the market today uh we we had an early sell-off or no we had an early rally right <clears throat> followed by a very sharp sell-off um, and it's ago, come right so. back it, it has, and, and that's in quite significant. By the way, uh, uh, this, this, you know, it's funny. The other day there was somebody talking about Russia, about going after governors or corrupt people. And, uh, and they were saying, oh, there isn't any country in the world that's going after per- corrupt politicians. Well, I can tell you the one country that's doing that uh, more than any is Mexico. Oh, really? Uh, you know, there's... Um, Three or four governors right now are actually wanted. You know, they're they're out they're uh, fugitives. They're on they're they're uh, on the um, Interpol one of you know on the Interpol list, and they just got one of the governors in Italy. He was arrested in Italy yesterday over the weekend or just last week. Uh, for and this is these are guys who've been collaborating with the drug cartels and all that kind of thing. You know. So there's at least four. They've either been ripping off the country in a big way, or they've been involved in drugs. And, and by the way, the head of the head of the federal police in Mexico just got exposed. Uh, was giving um, information to one of the cartels, to the Beltran Labor cartel. Uh oh. So this, a lot of this stuff is getting rooted out, and um, it's it's uh, not getting uh, you know it's not getting reported. As it should be, because uh, I mean, you know, you'd think these governors were kind of invincible uh, when when they leave office, but uh, that's uh, definitely not the case. There, um, there's about there's a, about four. There's a number. There's I mean, altogether there's probably about ten governors who have been convicted of various crimes and are in either in jail or on the run. <clears throat> and I mean, pretty big money. I mean, you know, the the money is in the in the Many, many, in tens of millions, in the tens of millions, in most of these cases, at, at a minimum, at a minimum. So, uh, anyway, going back to the market. Look, today is a very, very critical day because last week we had a break. You know, we had the break on the on the Fed minutes, and then we rallied back up. And if we, I would say this: if we, if we close down. By the end of today, and it doesn't look like we're going to do that now. But if we were to close down by the end of today, I would probably short the market uh, because that would be a repeat of the July 19th, 2007 high, and it would be similar to the November 10th or 11th of 2007 high as well. And after that, uh, the market uh, fell away and into a huge uh, sell-off. Um, it, uh, on the other hand, if we negate that and we go higher today and we start going higher later this week, which should probably should happen because normally we'd rally into a holiday like Easter, then uh, then the market uh, could be ready for another run to the upside. So uh, that's kind of my take on the market. The other thing is the gold, having gotten hit uh, late last week, has already rebounded quite uh, quite impressively. And the silver, um, you know, is coming back from from also getting knocked down by fifty, by altogether about 
70 cents off the highs. Um, the silver in particular, look, if we, if we start getting back up towards 18 and a half, 19, uh, I'm almost certain the silver is going to run into the 20s in a very big way. And also the gold getting above 1260, I think would be, uh, and, and holding up there would be the next important level. Um, the, the the nugget is, is seems to be very seems to be hell bent on trying to go through ten. It's it's, it's at nine ninety five right now. I think if the nugget goes goes over ten, you almost have to be long um, because we could be in for something pretty unexpected. You've got the French elections getting closer and closer, a couple of weeks away now. It looks like this. Um, Marine Le Pen is, is going to win uh, at least a, a round um, and, uh, uh, and given what happened with Brexit when we ran up $100 she's talking about taking France out of, out of, uh, out of the European Union so uh, that, could, that could be a, a catalyst to a higher gold price also if the silver you know, as I said last week, there's people trying to knock down the silver uh, price, and there's a record, all-time record short position in silver right now. This is kind of interesting because, as I was saying about the market in 2009, you had an all-time record short position mm -hmm. in 2009. Well, you know, we're two years off the low in silver. I'm oh, sorry, we're, we're we're a year and a half, a year and a quarter off the low. In silver right now, you know, we just got down to 13, 13 or so. We've actually been up to 21, and we've, you know, we retested down to 16, and now we're almost at 18. Uh, so how do you explain that we've got an all-time record short position? You, 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 you kind of expect that to be, you know, happening at $13, not 17 or $18. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and the same thing happened with the stock market. Uh, from 2009, you know, we, we had, I think the all-time actual high point <clears throat> of the short position was probably around 2012 or 20, maybe not 2012, maybe 20, 2011, probably 2011. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and we still got a big short position today in the stock market, <clears throat> in spite of the fact that we've been making new all-time highs for three months, three or four months. So this is a <clears throat> the same kind of an this is analogous to silver. The same kind of situation going on with silver, and it's actually very powerful. It's, it will be, it, it, the power of that will be manifested very strongly if we start breaking above twenty, because at some point these shorts are going to have to start covering, and that's added buying power to a, to an evolving bull market. And last time this happened. Uh, you know, it happened very, very fast. You know, we went from $18 in, in September of 2010. Uh, by the end of them, you know, we suddenly ran up into the 20s. And next thing you know, we were 25. And I think by the, you know, going into the early of New Year, we were 30. And next thing you know, a quarter later, we were at 50. So uh, something similar could definitely happen with the way gold and silver are poised right now. And remember, Russia's been buying a ton of, you know, unbelievable. Look, look, the Chinese, Russia, and India, between them, have been averaging around 100 tons per month of gold. <clears throat> 100 tons per month. They're continuing to buy. Russia has enormous quantities of gold today. So has China. So has India. Um, and. Obviously, the, the higher gold goes, the better it is for Putin. And he's and all this stuff that he's doing is probably at, at the in the back of his mind. He's doing everything he can to get the gold price higher. And now China and Russia are supposedly trying to bypass <clears throat> dollar dollar based transactions deliberately to weaken the dollar. And speaking of the dollar, the dollar did turn down today. Um, so this is another thing to keep an eye on, uh, because if the dollar breaks down from here, then then uh, obviously it's going to be that's going to be a, a force behind silver or gold that the shorts will have misjudged completely. So, you know, either, either, are the, how are the shorts right? 
you know, on, on being short silver. And probably it's a very risky position to be taking today for a lot of reasons, uh, including the fact that there's a lot of silver used in cruise mus- missiles. And, uh, and and it looks like they're going to be firing a lot more cruise missiles in the future. So, And there's more uses developing for silver every day. Uh, they're, now, now, they're now using it for cable, for a new type of cable, for the Internet of Things, for all these sensors that are going into the home, um, and, and they're using a higher quality. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, the, the HDMI cable. You know, the, the, you have to have, when you have a 4K TV now, you have to buy a 4K cable. You can't use a regular HDMI cable. It's sort of like that with silver. If you're going to use these new uh, high-delivery high-speed uh, communication. Have you seen uh, anything in 4K? Have you actually viewed anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got, uh, I'm going all 4K, actually. Uh, but there's uh, not, but, but there's not a lot of content that's produced in well, 4K, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, but the, the, Im- the images are, are, are better. Are still better? Are, okay. Not, no, they're dramatically better, actually. It's, it's just really, really clear, especially the print on any of the, on any of the, you know, the, the stuff that goes along the bottom of the screen, the news is, is very, very sharp. Hmm. Um, and once you once you've seen the Cook 4K, it's kind of hard to look at the old. The old <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna get better. Listen, I've got some great news for you today, um, which is coming to uh, Phoenix, I believe, very very soon. And for anybody in in Washington State now in Seattle. Uh, and, and I, in, in Seattle for sure, there's a new service uh, that's offering 1,000 megabytes per gig, one gig meg mm-hmm. internet for about $80. Wow. Uh, yeah. What's it called? And I, it's called Wave G. Wave G. I haven't heard of that yet. Yeah, a friend of mine is uh, he's where he's in the operations center. Uh, he's a very, very sharp guy. He's, uh, you know, kind of well connected with Microsoft and Amazon. Yeah, so I got it. I found their website. Um, a very cool website, by the way. <clears throat> order your gig. Find your building. Uh, right now, they're in Seattle, Portland, and San Francisco. Any idea when they're coming uh, to Phoenix? Uh, I, I, I'll, find, I'll try and find out, but he said he thought Phoenix was next. Uh, they're in, where they are? San Francisco, where? Seattle, and where? Uh, on their home page, it says, uh, Wave G is delivering gigabit internet to hundreds of buildings in West Coast cities, including Seattle, Portland, and San Francisco. Portland, Portland, right, right, Portland. Now, it says including those cities, so I, I would assume that means there are other cities. Oh, here's a map. Okay. I'll drag the map out. Uh, you can't see my screen right now, though, can you? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, yeah, there's... There's a little marker on Portland and a little marker on Seattle. Hmm. Well, I just wonder what happened. It's got a place where you can put in your zip code. A5. Let's just see. Hmm. I guess this is a building locator find a building. Uh, it shows a map of Phoenix, but I don't th- I don't think they have any service here yet. So yeah, hmm. I don't know exactly when they when they're coming to Phoenix. But well, that's that's pretty that's pretty incredible. So you'll get a gig for 80 bucks. He works in the operations center, and he says it's uh, phenomenal. It's just absolutely awesome. Uh, and he gets it. Now, office. is this being done with fiber optics or? Fiber optics. Fiber optics. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll sure be glad when they get here. 
I can't wait to switch out from. Uh, uh, I thought you'd like to do that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just aggravated with them. Uh, they overcharged me for cable. I think I'm going to cut the cable. Uh, we watch mostly everything we watch is on either network TV or stuff that we can watch on Roku or we've got Apple TV. Uh, well, speaking of Roku, there's a, there's a new, I don't know which version of Roku you're I have using. like the very first version that ever came out. I haven't upgraded. I, I, I want to think about upgrading because there's a new Roku. It's called a premium. Mm -hmm. Plus, and uh, it has a quad, I think it's got a quad core processor in it. It's, it's really very, very slick uh, device. And... Um, well, Amazon issued a warning uh, to people the other day about using this Kodi software. Oh, they did? Yeah, they said, yeah, you better not do it. So, I don't know if there's any... They got a phenomenal new box that just came out. And it's, uh, it's got a quad core processor in it as well. It's, it's a really, really impressive uh, box. Well, we just... Uh, th there's news out today that Amazon's going to spend $4.5 billion on its fight against Netflix this year, according to J.P. Morgan. In July, Amazon CFO Brian Olszewski said Amazon would nearly double its investment in video. So, I mean, Amazon, I mean... With Amazon, you, you, you get everything. Uh, I was just telling them before you came on. Two years ago, I was joking when this pro Prime thing first came along. I said, you know, before people would be ordering their toilet paper with this Prime business. And I got my first shipment the other day, 96 rolls of the good stuff for $35. No shipping. This huge box shows up at my door, and I'm like, would you order now? She goes, toilet paper. I'm like, wow, I hope we live that long. She goes, it's only 96 rolls. But when you break down the price, 96 rolls for 35 bucks, I mean, that's pretty doggone affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and no, you don't have to leave the compound. Yeah, no, look, these, these department stores, I mean, actually there was a thing on the weekend that uh, Kmart may be, may be going out of business. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, they've the the one Kmart that was uh, close to my house uh, here in Phoenix. They they closed about a year ago. Yeah, it's a tough, tough. tough. Oh, by the way, um, <clears throat> on the lumber, uh, actually opened limit up this morning, and it sold off. It's actually sold off. Uh, it's had a really, really massive reversal. It um, opened, opened uh, almost, lim almost limit up, and now is limit down, more than limit down. So <laughs> that's pretty unusual. Uh, that's, that's, that's a very, very unusual reversal, but it's a pretty big deal. <clears throat> so it doesn't mean to say that the top is in, but normally when you get stuff like that happening, it usually means... In December, Amazon took Prime Video Global by launching in over 200 countries. At the same time, Amazon has beefed up its originals, paying a reported $250 million for the Grand Tour, its blockbuster car show from the Top Gear team. The Grand Tour and The Man in the High Castle are Amazon's two most popular shows in most countries. John, if you haven't seen The Man in the High Castle, uh, you really need to go back to episode one, season one, and I explained that the con it's as if America didn't win World War II, and we got divided up. The eastern United States is run by uh, Nazi Germany, and the west coast is run by Japan. Uh, it, it really is uh, a quality show. And, I mean, there's, you know, the fact that they're creating all of this content. People can only consume so much content. And you don't have to go to the store to buy your toilet paper anymore. I mean, 
I guess let the robots take over. Um, I, I don't know how people are going to earn their incomes, but um, I mean, really, there's just no reason to leave the compound anymore. Right, 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 right. Now, there was a thing about the automation over the weekend. That, uh, I, I, listen, it's coming, but it's, it's, I think it's going to take a, a little a while longer before it really, really impacts life as we know it. But it's coming. <clears throat> You know, Amazon had a deal, or not Amazon, but Twitter had a deal last year to stream the NFL games. But this year, Amazon uh, is paying $50 million to stream 10 Thursday night games, according to the Wall Street Journal. Wow. Now, you know, we've been talking about Twitter, and it's trading at an all-time low, and... Uh, one of the head honchos is, uh, publicly announced he's selling 30% of his stock. And I just went through a list earlier. Uh, last year, the incomes for the COO, uh, the CFO, uh, the company attorney, the company attorney made the least $10 million, but other salary, other you know, in set with salaries and incentives, there was 19 million, there was 20 million, there was 29 million, and 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 people are crying about, you know, poor Twitter. How are they going to survive? How are they going to make money? I mean, I understand that quality people deserve to be paid what they're worth. You know, but I don't know that I've ever met anybody that's actually worth. 29 million. I mean, they might have 29 million, but you didn't see what I'm saying? I mean, all this money that's being now, Jeff Bezos runs his company completely differently. There's not a whole lot of overpaid people at Amazon. People do well, they have stock options, etc. But the last time I checked, the number two guy at Amazon, it's been a couple years since I checked, he had a $350,000 a year salary. Now, if he works hard and stays with the company, his stock options will make him wealthy beyond belief. But um, Jeff Bezos does things much differently. These Silicon Valley guys, this money that it's like Monopoly money. It's like they're bathing in it. I, I don't know. And mind boggling. Yeah. <clears throat> so, right now the market really has, you know, actually the market, this early sell-off and recovery could be a pre prelude to uh, to a start to some kind of an upside breakout because it's, it's kind of like a pretty strong test this morning that so far the market, you know, has rejected. Well, on the S and P last night, we had said to buy twenty three fifty five. The first move up was good for four points, and our philosophy is that important prices and important areas are almost always tested. So we get back below the trigger, and we make an eight-point rally. Then we get back below the trigger, and we make a three-and-a-half-point rally so far. So we did very well on the S&P, and then on, on gold, I just had gold up. Um, Gold, we said sell twelve fifty two. That was worth three hundred and eighty dollars per contract, depending upon how tightly you were trailing your stop. And on the long side, we missed getting triggered in by a tick, by one little tick. Now, uh, one of our regular guys had asked me to bring up a daily chart of gold, which I did, and. It's a shame you can't see my screens right now, but I've got a daily chart of gold, uh, the June contract, and I was able to draw a little rectangular box from the low put in on October 7th, and I drug it all the way across, and I hit the high that was put in on February 27th, and I also hit the high that was put in on April 7th. So 
this is definitely uh, some heavy resistance that we need to, you know, work our way through. We've, we've got to, if gold's going to continue higher, we've got to get this thing above 1278. And then if we can get it above 1278, I think we can take out uh, 1300. No, no. No, I, I totally agree with you. That's seven, 75, 78 is a very, very key level. That's, uh, and support right now is at 1240 on the daily chart. So we'll see what the next day brings. Uh, crude oil, I haven't looked at that yet. <clears throat> take a peek now I did mention earlier that I don't normally put out the weekly trading zones uh, to the general public this early in the week I save that for Thursday but crude I went ahead and spilled the beans because I thought it might help somebody in the audience uh, we're right at a weekly trading zone 52 90 slash 95, 52, 90, I'm putting these lines on my chart as we speak. Um, not going to put them all out, guys, because those are reserved for the partners. So, but yeah, just a little, just a little something. So, 52.90 slash 52.95, we spiked it. We got up to, you know, we spiked it up to 53.01, but now we've come back below 52.90. Now, uh, if we close above the day, if we, if we close for the day above 52.95, it's quite a stretch. Uh, nice stretch up to the next weekly zone so keep that in mind now last night on crude what we had suggested was buying 5270 5270 <clears throat> and we had a high uh, 52.99. So that's $290 per contract available. So while we didn't have any really huge moves today, uh, everything, you know, uh, now that was the first move, but our philosophy, important prices, important areas are almost always tested. Price came and got back below the trigger at 52.70, and on the second run up, it made it to 53.01. So that would be $310 per contract available. Again, depending upon how tightly you trailed your stop. So I know you got stuff to do, John. Is there anything else you want to cover? while we're on I think we covered everything thanks very much for the invite have a great thank afternoon. you sir all right we'll talk to you soon okay okay all right crude by 5270 so for all of you that signed up for the trial um, and you didn't get these last night I am sorry for all of you that did get them I mean I tried to get to as many as I could you guys just overwhelmed me uh, with the request. Now, here's what's going to happen. Let me tell you again. If you signed up, you're going to get an email that has two training class videos so that you understand tonight what to look for and how to trade the alerts. You're also going to get the link and the password 
for the live training room for this entire week. You don't have to go there. It's just something that we throw in with that trial. You're also going to be able to download the platform and the indicators. If you want to use our indicators for a week, learn our strategy, you can. That'll come in a separate email. In that email, with the link and the password, you'll also have all of this week's weekly trading zones. So as I said, I don't break them out to the general public until Thursday, but because you're participating in the $1 trial, you're going to get them in your email today. Okay, And then tomorrow morning in the live training room, we can talk about the weekly trading zone, trading zones. Also, you can just Google CFRN weekly trading zones and you'll find a bunch of articles that I've written over the years. We've been publishing them since December 14th of 2009. Publishing them to the public. Michael and I traded them before that. And at the top of the Google search page, if you click images, you'll see charts going all the way back. I think some of them are as old as 2009. And you can go on our blog and see all the way back to 2009. December 14th, 2009 was the first day we publicly published. And they still do the same thing they've always done. They go from zone to zone to zone to zone. We have partners who say they just trade the zones. So, Okay, so you're going to get an email with... The two classes, you're going to get an email with the link and the password to the live training room and the weekly trading zones for the rest of the week. And then tonight, I'm going to shoot for 7 p.m. Eastern, you're going to get tonight's weekly trading zones. Uh, not weekly trading zones, tonight's concierge trade alerts. That's what the whole trial is about. And I recommend that you uh, watch them, trade them in sim. Don't go diving in, throwing a whole bunch of money at this thing until you understand what the heck you're doing, okay? Don't, don't ever attempt something new with real money unless you're one of these Silicon Valley guys that's got, you know, more money that they bathe in it and they sleep on it. Uh, they mix it in with their cereal. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do it. There's no reason to throw away money. First, sim, so that you understand. You have opportunity to ask questions when you're in the live training room. Okay. So, all right. <clears throat> so we had very nice movement there on the crude. Now, this is a... That's a last week weekly trading zone. And we'll just get that we'll just get that on out of the way. April ninth. So to, again to all of you that I didn't get the information out to last night, I will make sure you have it everything that I just talked about, you'll have it before I send you the alerts tonight. Okay? Okay. All right, so that was a Sunday night Globex open. Looking to buy 52.70. Here we go. And there we go again. All right? So that worked out good. Back on the S&P, we've already covered that. It's moved more than three and a half now, I think. Why, yes. Yes, it has. It just went to five. Awesome. On the Dow, uh, we're starting to climb again so far. We've got 22. so far. Mm. 
<laughs> so I've, I've not had any comments from anybody about the podcast that I brought to your attention last week. S-Town. I disclaimed that it was full of adult language and it was uh, somewhat life-changing. Uh, for this old boy, anyway. Um, I'm really surprised that nobody has listened to it, commented on it. It's eight parts, so it's going to take up about, I think, seven hours, six to seven hours of your life. And Mike, we'll go back and talk about that gold chart that I had up, uh, the daily gold chart in just a minute. I guess you're just not podcast people. Okay. Or you didn't like the rough language or the fact that it had rough language kind of freaked you out. I understand. I fully understand. Okay. Soybeans last night, we were looking to buy 946. Now, if it's getting on about 5 o'clock Eastern and you haven't received all the information that I said I would be emailing you if you're on that dollar trial, you probably should email me and go, hey, man, I don't have this stuff support at cfrn.net. I should have it all to you by then. Okay. All right. Now, um, yeah, I should have it. All, I should have it to you by then. Okay. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. On the first move up, we got to exactly 9.48, is that right? Yep. So, that's $100 per contract available. Two points. This is just like the S&P, 12.50 per tick, four ticks to a point, two points, $100 per contract. Now, important prices, important areas, almost always tested. Bang. This time, we make it up to 949 Okay. So, that's going to be $150 per contract available. However, we never get out at the swing high or the swing low because we trail our stop which means we're always going to leave a little something on the table. You, you just got to get over that. Now, on this run up, we only made it to 947.75. So we were one tick shy of two points right there. One tick shy of two points. Now, Mike, I'm going to go to that gold chart right now before you end up taking off and we have a chance to discuss it. Okay. And I'll take this out of here because it's very colorful and it could be distracting. But do you see what I, what I did here? I think what you wanted me to do was to connect these two tops here, but I wanted to show you this way over here. Are you still there, Mike? I see you're logged in, but I know sometimes people have to take phone calls or step away from their desk, or sometimes they just get sick of listening to me and take their headset off. I can't, I can't do that. When I take my headset off, I can still... Hear myself, so go figure. 
Mike B, are you there, brother? Mike B. Now, your 62% fib that you're talking about, maybe if I send you in the chat box, I'm talking to you. Okay. I want to see where you were pulling that high from. Were you coming from way over here? No, you are not. Okay. Then maybe you were just pulling from there. Let's try that. Yep, that's your 62%. Uh, reverse fib right there. Now there's one more thing we can do to put a whole lot of lines on this chart. If we break out <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that, and we'll go to our Fibonacci price extension tool, and we'll go from the low to the high. Back to the low. Okay. Now, these are Again, what was once support became resistance, became resistance, became resistance. This is a daily chart. If we can break through, and it's also a 50% Fibonacci price extension. Okay, So there's three good reasons why price is having a difficult time getting through here. If it can break through. And what we have on the upside is a target at 12, at 1280, 1281. And then above that, 1330. And then, of course, the most recent high almost $1,400. This is as far as we track it right here. Okay. Now, is there anyone that doesn't understand how that works, what I just did? The importance of this, 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 and this. Because, see, you, you can begin preparing today for the day that we close above the 50% retracement and your target can be the 62. Uh-huh. And then tighten your stops and get ready for the 100%. Now, You've got to have an account that will allow you to, uh, an account size that will allow you to handle overnight margins. This is potentially a very good trade setting up. Now, we haven't looked at that dollar trade in a while. Where did that go? 
Here it is. See, Dollar did the exact opposite of what we were hoping it would do. No harm, no foul. We we never, you know, transmitted an entry price or suggested an entry price. What we said was we need for this pullback to turn down. We need a down close. We looks like today we might finally get a down close. But the step line has already hit the BVC. And so based on that, there's no trade. We're actually getting a bullish cross. So with the dollar climbing, although it's down a little bit today, that could make things difficult for gold. But you see what the dollar did? It, it went through all this to come close that gap. And I'm not a gap close kind of guy. I just, you know, not against it. <laughs> it's just not part of my makeup. Uh, it did it. And what did it do? Once it closed the gap, it literally took off. Okay? We were hoping to see it hold here, give us a down close below the BBC, and then we could, we had some short targets outlined, but it just never worked out that way. So see, you should always have charts like this, where if this, this, and this happens, then I'll be prepared and I'll know, you know, I won't have to make a hasty decision. I know days ahead of time what I'm going to do how I'm going to do it. Okay? Now, I had issues with uh, the Russell data last night, so I don't have anything for you on the Russell today. Also, on the weekly trading zones, I normally do the Russell. I couldn't do those either because I had data problems. So instead, I did the NASDAQ. So... Where's the NASDAQ? NASDAQ. Somehow it came undocked. Okay. April 9th, yep, the yellow arrows, typically for me, Michael used them to mark up entries and exits, but I usually just put one on each chart so that we can look back and see exactly where the Sunday night Globex open was, okay. Last night on Globex, on the NQ, we were interested in buying 54.28, which I think created a nice trade and then a not so nice trade. Let's take a look. If you have a teenager in your house and something doesn't seem quite right, I'm going to suggest that you go to Netflix and it'll probably be on the front page, New Editions. It's called 13 Reasons. I'm going to recommend that you watch that. I don't know that I'm going to suggest that you show it to your teenage child. Uh, I have a 14 year old son who can be very moody at times uh, and I don't want to put any ideas in his head. I will tell you that it does deal with the, the 
the whole tape, uh, you'll pick it up right from the beginning. It deals with the dark subject and the loss of a life. Uh, the way it was done, it's a Netflix original. I mean, they they really are turning out some incredible stuff. So, um, I realize you only got so many hours in the day. But again, maybe it's uh, not even a child in your home. Maybe it's a grandchild. You know, they're kind of moody, kind of depressed. You know, maybe there's signs that there's been this, what they call cutting, which I've never understood. Uh, they're not cutting, you know, they, they just, it, I don't know. I, I don't really understand it, but if you're concerned, watch this, and it's done from a teenager's point of view. And so it might give you some insight into what your teenager, whether it's a child, a grandchild, or a neighbor's child, what they're going through and what they're dealing with and what they're experiencing and feeling and thinking and the peer pressure. Some of us, you know, we're so far removed from high school that uh, it's hard to remember. Uh, my high school was a blur because I worked 40 hours a week and went to school 40 hours a week. Get an 80 hour <laughs> a week work week, but I'm not complaining. I'm glad I had a job. All right. So on the NQ. We were looking at five fifty four twenty eight. Five fifty four twenty eight. Oh, I know what I was gonna say earlier. All of you who did sign up for that trial, you really need to go to your contact list in your email client and add support at or just no 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 add at cfrn.net. Okay. That way, if it comes directly from me or if it comes from support, you can you can do that. You can simply add a domain. And what you're telling your email client is that anything that comes from at CFRN.net, I want it to go to my inbox. Okay. Otherwise it could get sent somewhere else. So uh, now I haven't I haven't drug this out today. Let me drag it out. For those of you who don't know, this is what the email looks like that you get every night. Okay, and these are all the numbers I've been talking about today. You can see Russell data issue, NQ, I fifty four twenty eight. Okay, cell fifty four twenty one. Now, you get nine markets every night. Two trades per market. So, you don't have to pounce on the first one that triggers. Be patient. You know, whatever, whatever other things you might have in your kit bag, not sure what where that term came from, but we've all heard it. Whatever you got in your kit bag, you know, you know, bounce it off some of that. You know, just because I suggest selling the NQ at fifty four twenty one, that's far from the holy grail. Trust me. Although, as you've seen, it's worked out over and over, but you know. I have my rough days like anybody else. Ooh, 5421 got down to 1575. So let's round that up to 16. And so that would be five points. Times $20 per point. Oh, 
important prices, important areas, almost always tested. And here we get down to a swing low, uh, 5406. That's going to be 15. Times 20. On the vice side, 54.28. Um, 28, we made it up to 43. 43 minus 28, that's 15. Again, we don't get out at the swing high or swing low. Why? Because we trail our stop. That allows us to maximize the trade or the profit potential on a trade, but it also means that we're almost always going to leave something on the table. And this nice little guy here from 28 up to 37, that's 9. The NQ pays $20 per point. So, plenty of opportunity to get your goal for the day. Now, S&P backed off of that. Now, I should point out, <clears throat> I already told you these last one zones, but look at how well... Actually, I showed you that at the beginning of the show. Last week's. Remember at the beginning of the show how I walked you through once we entered this zone back on Friday? Zone, the zone, the zone, the zone the zone, back up to the zone, back down to the zone, back up to the zone one more time. And each zone to zone move from 62 to 30, that's eight points. This is the carryover effect of the zones. Okay. Friday when the market closed, we have a Saturday and Sunday night the markets reopen. Often at the beginning of the week, Last week's zones will seem almost more powerful than this week's zones. It's almost like this week has to mature into these this week's zones, which is why I encourage all partners to keep a little notepad with last week's zones. I mean, man, you could have just been nailing this thing. I mean, what what would we figure out? 8, 16, is that where we started? We started back here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 8, 56, but one didn't make it by a point, so 55 points. Today, since the Globex opened last night, or actually, I think I counted and I counted this one on Friday. But you get the idea. A. All right. <coughs> So we covered the S&P, we covered the Dow, covered soybeans. Oh, what was the sell side on soybeans? We didn't get there. 936. This 
was our other daily chart on gold that we had created I guess last week sometime mm, that entry at 1272 that spike right there took it out at that that thing went to twelve seventy three thirty. Hmm. So, what does that mean? It means you guys stopped out. That's all. Nothing more. Now, it may be that. On this run up to 72 with the stop way back here you might have said you know that's a little too much risk for me I'm gonna wait I'm gonna let it settle up here and then I'm gonna take my trade so you either didn't take the trade you took the trade and got stopped down or you were waiting for some confirmation that this thing was gonna stay up here and you may still be waiting for that. And I think this is still a very valid trade setup. We just know that we've got three different reasons, actually four, why price is having such a hard time getting through this area from a technical perspective. We covered crude. Oh, we never looked at bonds today. Let's take a look at bonds. It wouldn't be a day if we didn't look at bonds. Now would it? Hello, arrows signifies Sunday night Globex open. Okay. Last night on bonds, we wanted to buy 151.17. We had a chance. To do that. What's the high here? Oh, 151.17. Yeah. So there's a chance. Hi, 151.17. Yeah. You could have got early an early trigger there, and that could have led to a stop out. Bonds are not for beginners. Okay, if you're just learning to trade, stay the heck away from bonds. Okay, they pay thirty one twenty five per tick. And you're like, really? Yeah. And so with just four ticks. You make $125 per contract, which is cool if you're on the right side of the trade. If you're on the wrong side of the trade, huh, not so cool. Now, from 151.17, where do we make it up to? Yeah, swing high, 152.03. So 32 minus 17. Plus 3 equals 18. So that's 18. Times 31.25. Per tick. 32 ticks to a point. One point is worth a thousand dollars. Okay. And the sell side did not trigger. 
Okay. So that's it. We have covered. We've covered it all. Every last bit. What we haven't done is our good word for the day. And we're going to do that. Going to do that right here. Right now. Before I say goodbye. If you have any final questions about anything that we've covered, put them in the chat box. When you put things in the chat box, no one can see what you type. Except me. Because I'm the only one in the studio right now. Okay, Mike, you are there. Yeah, I was talking to you for a long time. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to the daily goal chart. This was the low. This was support, which became resistance, which became resistance. And I had drawn these lines on here from the swing high to the swing low. Put the 62% retracement right there. Support becomes resistance, becomes resistance, resistance, resistance. So, and then we did Fibonacci price extensions, which are right here. No, I'm sorry. That's the 62% Fib retracement there. <clears throat> So we have all these different reasons why price is having a struggle getting up through here. Now, this chart's not going to go back to July of 2016. And it's just going to be a mess because it's not a continuous chart. I can make it a continuous chart. <clears throat> Let's see how much it throws everything off. July 2016. Yes, we could extend this right on over to there. We could even take it over there. Now we're talking about the same thing. Okay, let's see. Go back to 716 daily goal. Look at the downward trend line. Okay. In July of 16, the downward trend line. I don't know if this is what you're hinting at. <sighs> no, nope, because that don't match up.
I'm not seeing it. You're going to have to help me out there. I mean, the downward trend line would either be here or here. So, unless you're trying to connect that top to that bottom. Which, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to invent stuff now. Are you there, Mike? I see you came back in and you typed some stuff. And I know you're probably busy working. So maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I can do it for you. Went to a men's prayer breakfast um, this weekend because my son really wanted to go, and so I took him. And it talked about serving, something that of church-going people, guess what percentage of people, men, actively serve in the church. Anybody want to guess? Oh, I see a bunch of questions here that I missed. Well, according to these stats, and I don't know where they came from, but that's what the presenter read, 1%. If mama is the one that gets up and says, let's go to church, 14% of the family goes, how did that go? If mama's the one that says, let's go to church, 14% of those children become church goers themselves. If the father is the one that says, get up, let's go to church. 97% of those people become churchgoers. Which I thought was, it's, a, it's not a statistic, a statistic I had not heard before. I had. Uh... Okay, Mike, uh, so from August to October, okay, from August to October, okay, And are you want me to to run it up there, or you just want to leave it there? Okay. Well, if I run it up there, then we don't really have a trend line. If I do it like that, then we have a trend line. Unless your chart somehow looks different than mine, which it could. I mean, this does run into this spike. All the way. Oh, all the way to now. Oh, I see. All the way to now. Okay. 
I got you. That's what you were trying to show me. Got it. Yeah. So we had a trend line, guys. That's another reason. We're up against a trend line. Now we spiked it one time, but then we got slapped right back down pretty hard. We got the 62% reverse fib. We've got the sure fact that this was support, support. Now it's resistance, resistance, resistance for days. Uh, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm sorry. I couldn't figure out where you wanted me to go with it, but you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Just as it spiked it here, we spiked it here. So, hmm. That doesn't make me feel very bullish, I gotta say. But thanks for pointing that out. Very well. So back to how many men actually serve in ministry. Now by serving, I don't mean serve yourself a cup of coffee when you come in the front door. I mean serve in some form of men's ministry. Let me clarify that. How, what percentage serve in a men's ministry? Like you go to a men's small group or a men's Bible study. Anyway, the number, the statistic was 1%, which I thought was pretty small as small as you can get uh, I have and I have not uh, I'm currently in, a, in the have not because there's been some shakeups at the church and we had a great guy that used to lead the men's ministry he left and I'm not interested in running it and so we kind of don't really have one right now which I think is why we had this. We had guys come. We were partners with the church down in Yuma. And a bunch of their guys came up and spoke and talked about the importance of serving and all of that. So I think they're headhunting for somebody to lead the men's ministry. Uh, I think there are people there who... Oh, I don't want to say they're more qualified, but maybe they are. Yeah, they, they are more qualified because they want to do it. That it, There we go. They are more qualified because they want to do it. I just don't want to do it. Uh, it's not that I couldn't. I'm just being honest. Another page torn from the book of my life. Uh It's, it's the pressure of, you know, having to be somewhere at a certain time and be, you know, I, I got a lot going on, in case you hadn't noticed. I got mentoring sessions this afternoon, and I got to get all this stuff out to these new people that signed up for this trial. Oh, now I'm going to make it even worse on myself. And I'm going to put the link for the trial, because I, I actually I want to get it all done at once. So, I'm going to put it in the chat box. Okay? Going to put it in the chat box. Now, one trial every six months. There you go. One trial every six months. Two trials in your, in my lifetime. When I'm gone, you can do whatever you want. But one. So now we. Re, I got to tell you, we refund a lot of dollars because if it's been six months, if it hasn't been six months since your last trial, we just refund your dollar. We just log right into PayPal and we say, click, and the dollar goes back to you. Because that's the rules. 
Okay. Now, David, you said one percent of what? Did I don't know when you typed that question, in, but did you catch what I was saying? One percent of church-going men actually serve as part of a men's ministry inside of the church. Okay. All right. Great. I'm glad I repeated that so I didn't leave you lost there. Okay. Very good. So it's more like 2%. Point two percent. Why is it more like point two percent? You lost me there. Oh, of the total population. Oh, I, yeah. I, I guess suppose so. My calculator doesn't go that far. <laughs> okay. Good word for the day. We're out of here. Absolutely, positively out of here. Oh, one last thing I forgot to tell you. Facebook is confusing Brits with false suggestions that elections are taking place in their area. The company sent out new feed alerts for upcoming local elections to many people who aren't in areas with upcoming <laughs> elections. Uh, and China threatened to make life tough for Google if Trump keeps up his criticism. I thought they got along really well. That was the story I was fed. China won't unblock Google services for its citizens if U.S. President Donald Trump keeps slamming the country, according to a Financial Times report. Chinese politician Liu Binji said if Trump kept criticizing the country's trade practices, this would impact Google's process. China's relationship with Google is improving, and both sides and leaders have met on several different occasions. Uh, Trump has said some very severe things about Chinese trade. If this continues, Google's progress will be affected. Huh. Well, Google isn't available in China. Chinese citizens can't access most Google services from mainland China because it's blocked by the Great Firewall. Ah, pun intended. That means services like Search, Gmail, and YouTube are all censored along with Facebook and Twitter. That's a problem for Google given China has 1.3 billion mobile subscribers. The company moved its search service from China to Hong Kong in 2010 after a clash over censorship, but has been trying to re-enter the country since around 2015. One, Trump once described Chinese trade policies as rape. Now, this is when he was on the campaign trail, not since he sat down to dinner with Xi. Trump has controversially accused China of being a currency manipulator. <laughs> like, we're not? <laughs> God. Even though the country doesn't even meet the formal criteria. He also threatened to impose stricter trade tariffs. Uh, Chinese President she uh, came for his first face-to-face -face with Trump. Trade was likely top of the agenda and beyond that. I don't know. Uh, was there one last thing here? What happened? How did that happen? You know what? Let's go to our good word for the day and wrap this up. 
We started the other day about relationships. I will make a helper suitable for him. Remember that, Genesis 2.18. Adam lived in a perfect world, yet he was incomplete, so God created a helper suitable for him. Let's move on to the next part. Then the Lord made a woman, and he brought her to the man. Genesis 2.22. Adam lived in a perfect neighborhood, had a perfect job, one God gave him. Doesn't get much better than that. Nevertheless, he was lonely. Something was missing from his life. Bible says, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God made a woman. God recognized Adam's need for companionship, and he met that need. However, this is where some of us acting on loneliness, frustration, or bad advice rush ahead of God. There's a reason one of the nine gifts of the Spirit listed in the Bible is the ability to, to distinguish between spirits. 1 Corinthians 12.10 When someone comes into your life, they don't just bring their looks, talents, and financial assets. They also bring their spirit. If you've ever been around someone with a controlling spirit, a vindictive spirit, a resentful spirit, or a negative spirit, you know why this particular gift is so important. So make yourself a hard jury, one that's not easily convinced, one that requires concrete evidence before reaching a verdict. And remember that it's better to lengthen the deliberation process and ensure the decision you make is right rather than to reach a hasty conclusion and end up with a broken heart. Now, I realize that most of our audience is beyond courting age, but in this audience we have widows we have divorcees, okay? We have people who just never met the right person. And some of you have adult children who are of the courting age. And you need to have a talk with them. Not that talk, this talk about being equally yoked about finding the right person spiritually. Just because your bodies fit together real nicely. Do your hearts, do your thoughts, does your spirit, does your soul. Make yourself a hard jury, one that's not easily convinced, one that requires concrete evidence before reaching a verdict. And remember, it's better to lengthen the deliberation process and ensure the decision you make is right than to reach a hasty conclusion and end up with a broken heart and a broken marriage and a broken family and custody battles and who picks up Tommy on Tuesday for soccer and Tina on Thursday for tennis, you know what I'm saying? It's not good. It's not good for the kids. Forget about you. Forget about me. It's not good for the kids. I made a commitment when I got married 36 years ago. I said, I'm going to do this once. And if it doesn't work, I'm done. Unlike the common thought of the day, which is, well, I'm going to give it a try. And if it doesn't work out, I'm still young, I'm still attractive, you know, I'll try it with somebody else. I sold out to God, I made a promise to all the people gathered there and God that I would take this woman and through hell or high water, and there's been plenty of both, sickness and sorrow, plenty of both, richer and poor, both, that I would not forsake her, 
that I would protect her and love her and care for her all the days of my life. And back to the hell and high water part. Uh, came at year 13. God, that's hard to imagine. It seems like yesterday. But it was year 13. And it was so odd. I was just bragging to someone at work about, man, I'm, I'm so lucky to have been married for 13 years. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be back out, you know, in the dating scene, trying to find somebody. I'm just so thankful that my life's perfect. How smug of me. I went home that night and found out <laughs> my life wasn't so perfect. But I fought. I fought hard. Real hard. And by the grace of God, when you saw that I wasn't going to back down, that I was going to stand by my vows no matter what, that even hell and high water wasn't going to sway me, he restored my marriage. Now, trust me, I'm not blaming my wife. I, I was equally responsible. Probably more than... I didn't, I didn't realize how bad I was. I really didn't. What a wake-up call. Talk about a near-death experience. Oh, man. But that was, that was, that's what turned my whole life around at 37. True story. God will do whatever is necessary to get your attention. I pray that no one ever have to go through that. You may not feel wise and experienced when it comes to making such decisions. But hear this. It's not how much you know that arms you with the tools of great decision, of great decision making, but how much you ask. The first person to ask is God. And the time to do it is before, not after, you consummate that relationship. That is our good word for the day. Okay, so we're going to keep this goal chart here. Thank you very much for throwing that trend line in there and helping us connect a few more dots. Huh. Good stuff. I do wish that telemarketer would stop calling me. I'm going to go, guys. It's been a great day. I've enjoyed spending time with you, but as you know, i got a lot of work to do. i got a lot of emails to send out. If you don't have, if you signed up for the dollar, if you actually paid your dollar, signed up, you're on the list. If you don't have all those emails I talked about by 5 p.m. Eastern. Shoot me an email, support at cfrn.net, okay? And I'll figure out why you don't, and I'll get it off to you, okay? I sent a ton out last night, but I got a bunch more to send out today. So I'm going to go get busy on that. And for those of you who have never taken the trial, uh, the link is in the chat box. In fact, I could probably put it in here one more time. Now, today was a great day. I can't guarantee you tomorrow will be as great a day, but we just show up do our deal. 
Nothing much ever changes. Have you noticed that? Live training room, same thing. About five years now. Four and a half years, I think, are committed to the spreadsheet. We don't change things because if it's not broken, you don't fix it. You might oil it and grease it and keep it in good repair, but you don't fix what's not broken. Love you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.